Good morning and welcome to worship at Greenleaf and Reformed Church. Welcome to God's house. And though I would say that every Sunday when you are here, uh, where you're worshiping, you're in God's house. Again, that can be in your home as you're sitting back relaxing. Might be in a tractor cab this morning as you listen to our radio broadcast out of Cresco or Preston. And for those of you who are listening on the radio, and maybe you're not even aware that we also do stream live. And so you can find us at greenleafenrc.org. That's our webpage. Click on sermons and then uh, join us. Join us if you have that technology available to you as we worship the Lord together. You might also be watching out of Spring Valley, Chatfield, Harmony on our cable programs. We're grateful wherever God has each of us. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's a recorded service, if it's a live service. Uh, where you're at today, might you worship the Lord. Our call to worship, which I have used for a number of years, that has begun and become even more precious to me these last few weeks, and I pray. It's really an invitation from, from Jesus who says, Come to me, all you who are weak and weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke, lean on me, learn from me, for I am gentle and humble, and you will find rest for your souls. I pray today you'd find that rest, physical rest, spiritual rest, just a comfort in the Lord. So welcome this morning to God's house. Our first song as we open, there's a peace I've come to know, though my heart and flesh may fail, there's an anchor for my soul, I can say, it is well, it is well. Sing along with us if you would please. There's a peace I've come to know, though my heart and flesh may fail, there's an anchor for my soul, I can say it is love, Jesus has overcome, and the grave is I hear the cry of every longing 
sorrows, no more pain. I will rise on eagle's wings before my God, fall on my knees and rise. I will rise when he calls my name. No more sorrow, no more pain. I will rise on eagle's wings before my God, fall on my knees. prayer father where is the day drawing near and the victory has been won we're still in this time after easter lord and, and i don't want to forget easter it's still fresh on our hearts and though it's a different easter lord it, it's still the same because you are the same yesterday today and forever so thank you lord for the victory thank you for your grace that we might even feel it at this time when we need it the most lord might we feel your presence, your guiding us, leading us, Lord, down right paths for your name's sake. So, Father, as your people, we pray that familiar prayer, which takes on a whole new meaning for me today as well, when we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A blessing. As you're waking up, uh, greet your family. Uh, hi, everybody. A, a shout out, I guess, from Greenleaf and Church here to each of you. We're blessed to have Ed with us this week. Joni's here. Brenda's here. Barb is playing for us this Sunday. So we're still keeping our distance, but we're still loving. And thank you for loving on us, and we want to love on you. So give each other a hug this morning. As we go into our, our time of prayer, uh, prayers of rejoicing, those prayers that are certainly are mindful to each of us. A little closer to home, we sent out a, a prayer vine this week for Ivan. So continue to pray for Ivan. He is back home taking some treatments for, for cancer, some radiation treatments right now. So be with him. I understand Tom is having surgery this week. I believe it's on Thursday. So some of those needs, and we've sent some of them out to you on our our email this week, so be mindful of those in the care center that need your prayers. Thinking of those of our farmers that have begun to put the ground, work the ground, put the seeds in the ground, so praying for them. Praying for those of you who have had hours cut back. Some of you are not working. Uh, Health-related concerns, of course, uh, families, loss of loved ones, all of those are on concerns. But also we pray and we praise God today for who he is. And we want to start with that as we pray this morning. So will you join me in prayer as we start? Father in heaven, we acknowledge your name, your great name, Lord. Name above all names, the name of Jesus Christ. You're the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end. You're the light of the world. You are the gate You are holy and awesome, God. And we acknowledge, Lord, your presence. And you keep inviting us, Lord, to come and join you in this relationship. And it's really a relationship built on faith and built on trust, Lord. And the only way that can happen is if I walk closer to you. And right now, Lord, uh, yeah, I'm finding I have nowhere else to turn. And that, I think, is the same for all of us. This isn't normal. This is beginning to settle into a new norm for some of us. And we realize it, it can't stay this way, Lord. 
We're longing to know and wonder what it will look like and when that will happen, when we can move back into something that feels familiar. But we realize our school is done, at least for Minnesota here, for the rest of the year. And uh, where does that leave our graduates and our teachers and our students and, and some of those? Uh, even in the church life, Lord. We long to say, can we have vacation Bible school later on? What about Sunday school? When we, can we get back together and see each other? And so through that, Lord, I pray for patience for all of us. Because we come from a wide spectrum as we even listen here today. And uh, Lord, we want those things that are familiar again. We want to get back to being together, to have fellowship and all of those things that the body of Christ does to bring our gifts back down into into church here, and, and not I'm not talking gifts of money, Lord. I'm, I'm talking about the spiritual gifts you have given each of us, the gift of encouragement, the gift of writing, the gift of love, all those different gifts that make up your church, the things behind the scenes, and even those that, uh, that are on the scene this morning. So, Lord, continue to use us, though, in our places, in our homes, to encourage each other, to weep with those who weep, to encourage to laugh with those who laugh. When we are out and about, though we're separated somewhat, Lord, to uh, bring a smile to people, even if it's behind, uh, behind a mask at times. Lord, I don't want to hide behind a mask, though, because this is who you have created us to be, and you've called us to love. So, Lord, on this day, we want to love you. So continue to heal, Lord, our families, those that could be struggling might be struggling, Lord, financially at this time. And what we've had uh, is stripped away. What we've taken for granted is no longer always there. But through that, might we trust you more that uh, you will meet all of our needs. Uh, give us this day, Lord, as we prayed already, our daily bread. So walk alongside Ivan and Bonnie. Lord, be with Tom and the surgeons, those doctors and nurses that are still working. We realize some of them have had hours cut back, as many of us have, that are listening. So just help us in again in this time of uncertainty, Lord. But we praise you. And we do so in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit this morning, Lord. Uh, and all God's people said together, and say it with me at home, amen, amen. May the Lord bless you. Our song of preparation kind of flows into our psalm this morning, Psalm 46. Uh, Come thou fount, and uh, a spring of living water, and that of uh, springs at this time of the year, the gentle spring rains, that which comes through Christ, Jesus, uh, our fount of every blessing, is talking about grace. Should be a familiar song to you, so sing it along with us if you would. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart. To sing thy grace.
blessings. Morning, boys and girls. Not only have we had Joni here the last few weeks, Ed has come back too, trying to keep things a little bit familiar to all of you, so not a strange face at all, and we're just glad to have Ed with us this morning too as he brings us to worship. Morning, Ed. Morning, morning. boys and girls. Morning, boys and girls. How are you today? You say just fine, of course. I have a fish pole with me today. It's fishing season, you know, and it's short. And I know, boys and girls, you're thinking, oh, Ed caught the long pole in the car door and broke it in half. No, this is a, fo a pole that I use for ice fishing. And I walk out on the ice, and how deep is the ice or thick is the ice? Probably from your elbow to your fingers. I don't go out on thin ice. And you go out there and dig a hole or drill a hole. But what I'm talking about today I can walk on water, yes, but it's frozen water, isn't it? But there's a man in the Bible that walked on water, and I would like to share that with you. It's taken from Matthew 14. Jesus and the disciples, this is outside of town now, were healing, were preaching and teaching and healing, and they drawed a large crowd. Now, if you've watched the celebrities, uh, they... Uh, the good golfers, uh, they can draw a crowd, and there will be a fence up, and the people will be pushing against that fence. Well, I just imagine that Jesus had the same kind of a drawing, probably all these people, and I'm guessing the disciples probably made a circle, and they would say, do you love Jesus? If you do, and if you have a problem, get in this line. If you're a watcher and just want to see what's going on, stay back. Because I can see where these people would just crowd into Jesus and he would get nothing done. And so, and so that's how they went all day long, uh, preaching, teaching, and healing. Evening came and Jesus said, we need rest. And not too far away was one of the disciples' fishing boats. Now they're big boats. They probably had four oars in them to, to uh, get out and back in the water. And so all the disciples climbed into the boat and pushed out from shore. Jesus said, I will join you later. I need to pray to my heavenly Father. So out the disciples go in the water with the wind behind them, and so they're moving pretty good. They get out there quite a ways. And Peter looks up and said, Is that a ghost? And Jesus said, have no fear, it is me. And Peter said, and Jesus was walking on the water, of course, and Peter said, if it is you, Lord, can I come out and join you? And, and Jesus said, yes, come on out. So Peter gets out of the boat, starts walking toward Jesus, and sees this big wave coming at him, and he thought to himself, oh, this is not going to be good. This is not going to be good. And down he went. And, of course, he didn't have his life jacket on, you know. And so Jesus comes over, grabs a hold of him, and helps him get back on the boat, helps him get back in the boat. Now, my question is, boys and girls, why did he sink? Why did Peter sink? And the answer is, as long as he looked at Jesus, as long as he looked at Jesus, he didn't sink. No, it's when he took his eyes off Jesus. And that's our problem today, boys and girls. We have problems. You will have problems. Mom and Dad has problems. But if we keep the thought of Jesus, then the problems are a whole lot less. Yeah, that's right. Keep the thought of Jesus and our problems, oh, you're going to have problems. Mom has problems, dad, grandma, and grandpa. Everybody has problems. But if you keep Jesus in your thought, then all your problems will be a lot less. Now, Pastor Roger will lead us in prayer, and you repeat after him now. Okay, let's pray. You know how to do this. So, dear Jesus, dear Jesus, help me, help me to keep my eyes fixed on you only. To keep my eyes on you always. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your grace. And your love. And your love. Amen. Amen. And remember, boys and girls, we say this line, I say this line, 
And you, you, you shout out, Hallelujah, Amen. Ready? God loves you kids, and so do all the people listening. Hallelujah, Amen. Amen. I bet your mom and dad are awake now. Mm. Thank you, Ed. Boys and girls, we love, love you and long to have that time back when we can be together again. So we're just going to have to be patient. But uh, thank you. Thank you for your love. Today, for our passage, I'm going to be one last time looking at the Psalms in this time of wondering, you know, where is God in all this? We started off looking at Psalm 121 a few weeks ago that would say, I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My hope comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Psalm 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? Psalm 91, lastly, those who live and trust in the Lord will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. So there's all these statements that these psalmists, and most of them are David, today, today we don't know who this psalm is the psalm writer is. In fact, it's interesting, the subheading in our Bible uh, doesn't list any particular individual. It lists the descendants of Korah, which uh, that would have been this family line that would have been the, the musicians and the singers. So it's a song that came through them. But interesting enough, it says to be sung by soprano voices. And when I think of soprano voices, I think of those that are angelic, those that are high. And like, if that's how this was supposed to be sung or recited, it's got to be a song of, of joy, right? A song of confidence. And certainly it is all of that and more. So Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength. Always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. A river, a river brings joy to the city of our God, the sacred home of the Most High. God dwells in that city. It cannot be destroyed. From the very break of day, God will protect it. The nations are in chaos. Their kingdoms crumble. God's voice thunders, and the earth melts. The Lord of heaven's army is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. You're going to hear that later on one more time. Here's this invitation, though. Come, see the glorious works of the Lord. See how he brings destruction upon the world. He causes wars to end throughout the earth. He breaks the bow and snaps the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. The Lord of heaven's army is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Here ends the reading of God's holy and inspired word. Let's pray as we ask God to just make this alive for each of us. Father, speak to our hearts. We are all at different places right now, different places in our lives, different places physically. We're at the end of our chapters of our books. We're at the beginning of our chapters. We really don't know all the time, Lord. But open the eyes of our hearts this morning, Father, to, uh, so that they might hear your word fall fresh on us today to give us encouragement and a greater faith and a trust in you. We pray this in your name. Amen. So if you're mapping out this passage, and you've heard me say that, and the psalms are pretty easy to map out sometimes, and what I mean by that is when you map out a psalm, you look at words that are alike. Sometimes they're totally opposite. Sometimes there are phrases that are the same. In our Bibles, this maps out pretty easily into three parts, first of all, because this is sung as a song, so if this was a song, it's like there are three verses. 
And in our Bible, there's this section that says interlude after verse 3, interlude after verse 7, interlude after verse 11. So that's like a break or a chorus in between. So it breaks up that way three ways. Also, there's this idea of refuge, verse 1. God is a refuge. And then the end of verse 11. Israel, the God of Israel is our fortress. So refuge, fortress. And certainly, verse 7 is identical to verse 11. The Lord of heaven's army is here among us. We see that twice. And then there are two invitations by God, verse 8 and verse 10. Come, and then he says, be still. So I'm thinking again, this psalm has this idea of refuge and fortress. How do we know that? Because that's how it starts, that's how it ends. So to break down fortress for us, uh, boy, as a kid, I just shorten that up and I think of fort. In a fort, that's where God would be. Uh, literally, that starts off pretty early in life, doesn't it? Even with our grandkids, first fort you might have and think back to the first fort you made probably was just a tablecloth or a bed sheet hung over a table, right? Or nothing else. We could get four chairs out in the middle of our dining room and then we'd throw over that blanket and it's like that's the first fort. Could be a great big old cardboard box. That could be your fort. I can remember a snow fort I built when I was a kid with, along with my brothers. But really, the first fort that I would call a fort, and as we get older, our forts move from off the ground to up in the air. So I'm thinking of like a treehouse fort. The first one, and I think my nephews and nieces might be watching, and that tree isn't there anymore, but it would have been right out of the old farmhouse facing the south. Dad made that big fort, treehouse, A-framed house it was almost like. Some particle board back then. The sides would open. Uh, that was wonderful. But the one I really remember, the one I really remember is the one down the cow path, that great big old oak tree. And uh, though the barn isn't there to this day, as I alluded to a couple weeks ago, I believe that tree is still there. And that's where Steve, Randy might have been tail end of that fort building up in that tree, but we owned that to speak because Steve and I especially, we were the ones cutting up out there. We were doing the nailing and we put that fort, oh, it wasn't anything near what the one dad had made up by the house, but it was cool in that we put it up higher in the tree and uh, it was our fortress. It was our fortress when it was raining. First of all, the tree provided probably more protection than our fort. Uh, our fort would have let the rain come in. I know it wasn't that proof of water, but a fort, a fort to me is where you want to hang out. A fort is where it's just fun to be there. So today when I think of this passage, I'm thinking of then God is my fortress. And the only way to experience God as my fortress is to say, you know what, I need to know God. I need to be hanging out with him. I need to be there in the joy, not just the tough times. And I think that's, that's going to help us answer this question today. Where is God in all this? Because if we're only running to God in the times of trouble, we're going to be continuing to ask that question. Where's God? Where's God? We're going to be looking for him. God, won't you show up? And on the other side, God is saying, I'm here all the time. Are you going to show up? When are you going to come to my fort? We're waiting to invite God to our fort, and God is saying, I'm already your fortress. I'm providing it. When are you going to come? So it, it seems as we break this passage down into three parts today, it does answer the question that maybe is on your heart. Because it's on mine, I'll be honest. Where is God in all this? How long will this continue to last? And it's going on longer than I expected it to. I'll admit that. But I'm also finding out that uh, this is where God would have us. And there's a reason behind it. I think the main reason is for me to stop and slow down to say, Lord, 
You are in control. So the first answer, where's God in all this? Well, our psalmist starts off pretty confident. God is my refuge and my strength. He is always ready to help in times of trouble. He is always ready to help in times of trouble. Again, this is a, a psalm of confidence. This is a psalm that would proclaim God that he is in control. It's a psalm of joy. It's a psalm of deliverance. Confidence, verse 1, 7, and 11. The Lord of heaven's army is here among us. The Lord of heaven's army is here among us. He's, God is always here, ready to help us. So, in other words, God's right here. He's right here. It's like our kids yelling for us when we're young. They might be in the other room. Mom, Dad, where are you? It's like, I'm right here. I'm still here. God is saying that today. I'm right here. In fact, I'm revealing myself. We're reminded of Psalm 27 that we looked at a couple weeks ago. If you seek me, you will find me. Call on me. Psalm 91. Call on me. I will answer you. Psalm 27 would say, seek the Lord's face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. So, Plenty of these psalms speak about the fact that the Lord shows up, but then he expects us to show up too. He would desire that we would call on him. So here the psalmist says, Lord, you are my refuge and my strength. I think many of us would say that today. You bet. I'm at wit's end. I can't fix this. I can't change it. Yes, Lord, you are my refuge and my strength. But here's the deal. Here's the kicker. Do I trust him? Do I trust him in all this? If I make him my refuge, if I say he's my refuge, then can I live without fear? The psalmist would say in verse 2 and verse 3, so we will not fear. We're not going to be afraid when the earthquakes come, the mountains crumble into the sea, those devastations of the Lord. There were earthquakes back in the Bible time. The mountains were crumbling. Same as today. In fact, it almost sounds like the psalmist would say, bring it on, because he says, let the oceans roar. Let them foam. Let the mountains tremble. So in other words, you know what? When I'm trusting in the Lord, nothing's going to shake me. Everything around me might be different. Everything else doesn't look the same. But he says, I will not fear. I'm not going to live in fear. Back Romans chapter 8 this week, I was drawn to that. Verse 31 would say, if God is for us, who's going to be against us? This God who knows all about me, who cares for me, if he takes care of the birds, that in Matthew, Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, if he's taking care of the birds, isn't he going to take care of me? Oh, I have such little faith at times. Psalmist says, I don't need to be afraid. When everything is shaking around me, when the ocean waves are battering against the side of the ship, when everything's crumbling, I'm not going to be afraid. Why? Well, sometimes that's when we hear God's voice. Remember last fall when we were looking at Elijah and his story? And in 1 Kings, we have that passage out of 19, chapter 19. When Elijah, if you remember, was running from Ahab and Jezebel, Jezebel was seeking him, wanting to kill him after they had that great moment on the mountain. And Elijah's running away, and he's running to Mount Sinai, and he gets there, and he comes to a cave, and he hides there, he spends the night, and then we hear these words from God, what are you doing here, Elijah? And Elijah would reply, I've zealously served you, Lord, and and he has these things that uh, I've served you and I'm all alone and they're trying to kill me. And God says, verse 11, go stand before the mountain. And Elijah stands there and the Lord passes by in a mighty windstorm. It was such a terrible blast. The rocks were torn loose. And what we read, the Lord was not in the wind. Just the opposite of what we read in the psalm, isn't it? After the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was fire. The Lord wasn't in the fire. After the fire, get this. 
after the fire, there was the sound of a gentle whisper. And God would say to Elijah again, what are you doing here, Elijah? Elijah would learn to trust God. We would read after that that God would say, Elijah, I've preserved everything. In fact, there are 7,000 that haven't bowed the knee to an idol along with you, so you are not alone. You are not alone in this. Plus, I am here. I'm in the midst of this. And the psalmist, I think, recognizes that today, too. He will not live in fear. There's this river, then, we read. And a lot of metaphors in here, I believe. Some of it can be taken literally. Some of it, I think, is figuratively. Uh, a river that brings joy to the city of God the sacred home of the Most High. So once again, there's this illustration that God is present, God is near, God dwells, verse 5, in that city. It won't be destroyed. From the break of day, God will protect it. So many of these psalms are reminiscent of one to the other. Psalm 121 talks about that, that night and day. God does not sleep. He doesn't slumber or sleep when we studied Psalm 121 at the beginning of this. Here there's this recollection again of, of God being there from the break of the day throughout all of our day. He's there. He's protecting us. God dwells in that city. Now, is the city Jerusalem not named? That's possible. No doubt, back in Israel's time, they would have thought, if there's ever a place God dwells, it's in the temple, it's in Jerusalem. But what about us today? Is he talking about a certain city or is he talking about people? Is he talking about us? I think he could be. A river brings joy to the city of our God. A river, I like in my readings this week, Keel and Delish said that a river, this river of grace, they're taking it as a metaphor, so they're saying this grace brings joy to the people of God in a time of trouble. And I like that. Again, it goes with that whole part of this psalm that talks about God's presence. God's with us. So there's this river, this river of grace that brings joy to God's people because God is in the midst of them. I'm right here. I'm always ready to help in times of trouble. So where's God in all this? He's right here first. Second, this whole theme, verse 7, verse 11 the Lord of heaven's army is here among us. God has made his home among us. He's our fort. He's our fortress. Come, see then these glorious works. Going back a little bit, nothing can destroy this city. All respect God's thunderous voice. And ironically, God talks to Elijah in a still small voice. And now here we hear that God's voice thunders, and the earth melts. What do I take from that? What's the psalmist mean? God's voice thunders. Well, I believe all will respect God's thunderous voice. If we're in tune with God, in a relationship with God, we can hear his thunderous voice. Uh, it can also be a still, small voice. God speaking. Uh, that gives us calmness. It gives us assurance, doesn't it? Now, I'm not saying all of us are always going to hear God's audible voice, but God speaks to us through one another. He speaks to us through our family, our conscious. Those are all different ways God speaks to us, and, and we see Him in nature, and He speaks to our heart through that, uh, through that small voice. I think here, the voice thunders and the earth melts. I'm thinking back all the way to Genesis chapter 1. God spoke. And the day and the night were the first day. God spoke, and he would say, it is good. God said this, and it happened. So what I take from this is God speaks. God's in control. There's that big theological word, sovereignty. God is sovereign, meaning God is in control. And then it's us who try to live in that will, to live in that will of God, hearing his thunderous voice, hearing his quiet voice, even when the nations are in chaos, when kingdoms are crumbling, 
even when it looks like everything's out of control right now for all of us, the psalmist would say as he looks around, God's voice speaks and the earth melts because we're, we are his. We are the sheep of his pasture. God cares for us. There are two invitations here towards the end of this psalm. Come, come see the glorious works of the Lord. See how he brings destruction upon the world, causes wars to end, breaks the bow, snaps the spear, burns the shield. So there's an invitation to come, uh, come closer, come pay attention. I think that's part of it. Psalmist is saying you, you can't take the Lord as your refuge if you're so distant. If you're not trusting, he's saying, come even closer. Come into this relationship. Acknowledge God's glorious works. Learn from him. Take notice. And then second, be still. Be still and know that I am God. To me, that's just an invitation to draw even closer to God. That I will see, if I quiet my soul, I'll feel God's presence. Be still and know that I am God. It's almost got God saying, putting his hand out and saying, are you going to grab it? Are you going to trust, trust me in this? The psalmist would say, God's works are glorious. Come, see the glorious works of the Lord. They're on de demonstration. They've been displayed. They are there for us. See how he brings, yes, destruction upon the world. In other words, the world is in God's hands. Who would have thought God could stop us in this amount of time? And not just us in our country, our places here, our villages, our towns. The whole world right now is subject to God. He causes wars to end throughout the earth. He's in control. He breaks the bow, snaps the spear, burns the shields. There's some that would say, okay, is the psalmist talking about wars that were happening right around them? Possibly. Possibly. Enemies surrounding them? Maybe. Today in our context, wars, disease, famine, loss of job, all those things that are surrounding us right now, and in the midst of that, the psalmist would say, be still. Look at my glorious works. Know that I am God. He says then, these are almost like God is speaking, I will be honored. Twice over, I will be honored. First of all, by every nation, I will be honored throughout the world. God would say, take notice Who's in control right now? I am still here. Just be still. No. Know that he is God. So is this about enemies? Some would say, the psalmist is saying, God is going to still our enemies. I won't disagree with that. I pray that prayer often. Lord, silence my enemies. You know, we would all say, peace, I can only have peace if my enemies are gone. Uh, no, peace isn't that kind of peace right here. I think the psalmist is saying, be still, experience peace when you have the presence of Christ. That's when you can experience this peace. Then I will be honored by every nation in the world, but I'll be honored by you. Be still and know that I am God. The NIB book that I read this week had this statement in it that this passage at the end is like a big stop sign. Not just those normal ones. The new signs now, some of those at a T intersection are just really huge. And they've got posts that now have reflectors on them. And it's like, you can't miss that stop sign in the dark. And the stop sign is there for me today saying, Roger, stop. Stop what you've been doing. Stop what you've been putting your trust in. And some of that is, yeah, for many of us, it's material possessions. Stop doing what you've always been doing. And I know we're anxious to get back. We're anxious to get back and have things normal. But it does cause me to stop and trust God. When Brenda's been going to get our groceries, 
and we've been going every other week. We have our shopping list, and you've heard me talk about that. Sometimes my prayers are like shopping lists. Lord, I need this, this, and this. Well, we have our shopping list. Brenda has her shopping list. It's been a little more difficult because now we don't have the ads in the paper even to, to say what's on special. But uh, I have my favorite things. I like my Lay's potato chips, and we might like our certain kind of northern tissue or whatever we're familiar with. We have our favorite things. And uh, pretty much you can go to the grocery store and get something like it, but you might not get exactly what you want right now. So it causes us, though, to trust God because Brenda and I will say, you know what, we'll, we'll go, we'll go to the grocery store today and whatever God gives us, that's what we're supposed to have. We not, might not find toilet paper, but I'll have you what, last week uh, she did find toilet paper even. It wasn't two-ply, it wasn't the cushy northern, it was single-ply. But God gives us right now what we need. And what we've taken for granted for so long has probably been stripped away from us. And God says, won't you stop and just trust me right now? Earthly things are going to pass away. I think the psalmist here at the end is, is looking beyond the earth, looking to that also like many psalms do. They look to eternal salvation through Jesus Christ. The Lord of heaven's army is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. That fort down in that old oak tree where the barn isn't anymore, I'm pretty sure, and my nephews have rebuilt what was there. I know one time a few years ago, at the base of that tree, there was pieces of wood and some tin down there. So, Taylor... If you're listening, you probably can remember Trent, you guys, you two brothers building that fort up again. Caleb might have been a part of it. Your sisters could have even been a part of it. But I know when you were little, I remember hearing hammering going on down in that tree. So our forts get made better sometimes and then weather deteriorates them. Anything that's man-made is not going to last. You can't depend on that as your fortress. Snow melts. Tablecloths get put away. Chairs get put up back by the table. But the psalmist says here, this will last if you put God first in your life as your refuge. Where's God in all this? He's here right now. He's here ready to help us. It's his timetable. I'll admit that. It's not on my timetable. God has made his home among us. Twice over, the psalmist says that. God has made his home among us. And then he invites us. I pray you'd hear that invitation today. God's inviting each of us. He's invited me this week to say, come. Look at all the glorious work that I've done. Look what I've given you. Trust me in all this. And then a second invitation where he says, won't you stop and be still? Quiet your soul. Acknowledge me as your God. I am God. Maybe you haven't made that decision ever. Maybe this time of uncertainty is drawing you closer to something. Most of those things, man-made, aren't going to last. But God is inviting us today to come nearer to him. Maybe you've made that decision long ago, but I guarantee you, it, even if you called yourself a Christian, if you filled the pews of a church every single Sunday, that doesn't mean you're walking in the closest relationship with the Lord that you can. So this psalm invites me today even to say, will you trust God even more, Roger? Will you walk closer to me instead of at a distance? And we're distancing ourselves from each other, aren't we? Six feet away, God would say, yeah, come a little closer to me. Come right up next to me so you can hear my still small voice. says, I'm right here. Let's pray. Father in heaven, as we've looked at all these psalms, the, the thread that seems to be woven through all of them is the fact that you are our shepherd, you are our light, our salvation. Those who trust in you will fall in your shadow, Lord. You don't sleep. You are there. You are here among us. Uh, and then you would invite us. There's 
plenty of invitation in the, the end of these psalms, Lord, inviting us to, to come even closer to you. So move us, Lord. Move us out of our complacency. Move us when we are fearful. Move us closer to you, Lord, in this time to trust you. When I can't hear you, I can't see you. I can't even feel you at times, Lord. But to keep reminding me that you are here, and I need these psalms to remind me of that. So walk alongside of us, Lord, this week. We have uncertain days. We hear one thing this day, and there's another thing new the next day. But thank you that you are, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. So, Lord, bless your people through this week. Might we honor you. Might we hear your voice and see you face to face. Amen. Blessings. Blessings on your week. Our closing song as we finish out our time of meditation this morning is a familiar one again, too, that calls us to lean on the everlasting arms of Jesus. Verse 1, what a fellowship. What a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. And then there's that familiar chorus, leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, safe and secure. Sing along with us if you know this song. What a fellowship, what a joy divine. Are grateful that you have invited us into your homes on this day. Ultimately, we'd ask that you'd invite Jesus Christ into your home and into your hearts on this day as we lean on his everlasting arms. Grateful for the guys up above here that are helping us out, Clayton, Alex, and Steve. Thank you. Thank you, congregation, for your love, your support for our church at this time as we, too, love and pray for you. Hear God's parting blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. People of God, walk in peace and in the confidence of God who is always among us and walking with us. Amen. Our closing song, Because He Lives, just the chorus this week. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future, and life is worth.
God, from whom all blessings flow, blessings. Thank you.